love to listen to you because it, it helps it helps us too. They can go in and get infertile tubalization, right? Have children. Infertile tubalization. Well, it's why people listen to your show, though, right? Because they know that some way you're going to prove them wrong over and over again. Baby, guess what? I'm pregnant. And I say, well, baby, guess what? I had a vasectomy. <laughs> Women believe they can change any man. She thought that she was going to change you. I'm a person I can't, nobody can change me. Finally, somebody on the radio telling it like it is. I, I bet women are shocked and in disbelief. I bet women do not believe that that's what we're thinking. They have no clue, and you are the only one who is telling the truth. And I just had to call you. And thank you, because your brilliance is on such epic proportions. I've got this young lady that I know. She's 22. She's on her third kid by a third man. And I, I wanted to call up the third father and tell him about the Hail Mary that you talk about and let him know, listen, please listen to Tom Likas and pull the Hail Mary on this girl. <laughs> You know, a lot more people would be a lot better off if they listen to you. I know, I know I'm going to be better off pretty soon because I listen to you. I'm about ready to go get a bisectomy. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. What is the role of a woman? Just to, to screw them and leave? Or what is the role of a woman in your world? The role of a woman is from her, is from her left arm to her right arm. <laughs> I see. I was listening to your show and, you know, congratulations or whatever. But on what? On your show, I'm congratulating you on your show. You're so rude. Um, Thank you. I never gave my man what he wanted. Like, I never realized that guys, for example, need it all the time. I thought, that's crazy. They should have the same sex drive as us. But now it's like, whenever he wants it, I'll give it to him. No matter if I'm tired, no matter if I'm sick, no matter if I feel sleepy, no matter if I'm stressed out. Like, it's just, it's true. It's, they'll find it somewhere else if you don't give it to them. Oh, did you want to be on the air? No, I hope not. <laughs> you don't want to be on the air? No, I, I don't know if I want to be on the air or not. I've never called into a radio station before. Well, if you don't want to be on the air, why would you call a radio station? I was just absolutely flabbergasted, and I was listening to your show. Or one whoever, sentences. Who's ever on the show right now. Whoever he is. And, um, they were talking and... About, and they were talking about having to please your, your partner at all times and everything because that's your job as a woman. And I was just flabbergasted. And, and... Do you know what a period is? Yes, I do. should use one once in a while. Whoa, my goodness. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Just shut up. I can't take this anymore. Please. Please shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. It's starting to go crazy. Shut up. God damn it, you can't shut up. I'm sitting here, I'm listening to this. I can't believe it. Shut up! God damn it, you can't shut up! Why can't you shut up? God damn it, that's annoying. From Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. It's knockerism, that's what it is. It's boobism. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is... Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Headlights on across North America. Ladies, if you see the headlights on, you see the high beams, you see a like his bumper sticker, show them your knockers. Let's see the cans, girls. We flash you, you flash us. Did Dean just hit the wall in there? That was me. Oh, that was you. Okay. 
thought he was getting pissed. I thought he hit the wall. What I miss? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Well, here we go with wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game, as long as you're absolutely fascinating, because if you're not, we're going to kick your ass the hell off the telephone. It's that simple. You just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. This is Ben on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. For, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Why, thank you. Awesome show, buddy. I I got to tell you, I got a situation now. Um, I've been married for six years. I have uh, two beautiful kids, and... Um, I, I've been having uh I've been cheating on my wife and she actually knows about it and I've been cheating with uh my secretaries. But um here's the problem though. I mean my wife already knows about it but I mean I feel guilty, Tom. Am I doing something wrong? Come on, pal, please. You're no, not no. you're not serious. No, yeah. I swear. No, you're I, not serious. You're not. I swear, Tom, I mean, I can email you her picture if you even want to see my that's, wife. That's not the point. First of all, why are you married? What's that? Why are you married? You know, why not? I mean, she's a beautiful girl. Why not? Yeah. Because if you get divorced, it's going to cost you. Yeah, but I, I know I'm not going to get divorced because, this is, I mean, this is the woman in my dreams. But, you know, I still got to have my fun. And I do. Why do you need to have a wife? Well, you know, I wanted some kids. You have kids? Yes, I have two kids. That's great. So when did you get married? 19? Pretty much. Pretty good, much. Good work, Ace. Yeah. But, but you know what? I started making a lot of money early in my life. I enjoyed my life. I partied my butt off. And, you know, when I met When my... did you start? When you were 11? <laughs> No, no. Actually, when uh, I just got out of high school when I was seventeen, I got I got into this job into uh, the real estate market when I was seventeen, and I started off as a as a caller. And you know, right now I'm I'm sitting here in my I got a huge office. I got about thirty employees, and uh, you know, I started making my first million at the age of twenty three. So everything's come to me really easy. And now that my wife is just basically, I mean, she doesn't even, she doesn't even question me, Tom. Nothing. And I got these beautiful she Clearly girls. she's there for the money. What's that? Clearly she's staying around for the money. That's the thing. That's, that's what I thought, too. But, I mean, I'm telling you, Tom, she doesn't even spend my money. I feel so guilty. I give her, I give her. Then cash. stop doing it. I, you know, this is so obvious. Just stop doing it if you feel guilty. Well, I mean, if, if, if stop if, doing it, if you feel guilty, but it still feels good, Tom. Why <sighs> would? I mean, you should see these girls that work in my office, man. Hell, it's not a question of what they look like. If you feel guilty, stop doing it. Yeah, but see, here's the problem, Tom. <sighs> I think I think my wife is also cheating, but you know, I I'm scared to ask her because you know why? What are you, a little girl? No. And why do you care if your wife is cheating? You're cheating. Well, I mean, it's different, isn't it? No. Well, why not? You're cheating, she's cheating. Yeah, but I don't know for sure if she's cheating. That's the thing. But why How do, do you... I ask her? How do I find did out? You just oh. ask her. How did she find out you were cheating? Well, she found out a long time ago. How did she find out? She just, she knew from one of the girls, because, um... You know, she's she's really familiar with all the employees, you know, and um, I guess one day she just confronted me, and, you know, at that time I just said, yeah, you know, what the hell? Yeah, I am. I couldn't deny it. It was really obvious, you know, all those nights I used to stay late, and, um, but still, she, I mean, she didn't, she didn't even want to break up. She didn't even want to divorce me. I, you know, we talked about it. You know, we went to go see a stupid counselor for, like, two times, and then after So that, she wasn't so cool with it, was she? What's that? She wasn't so cool with it, was she? In the beginning, 
she she kind of yeah she was kind of a little mad about it but then she was not a little mad about it she was so mad you had to go to a counselor yeah well you know i didn't want to at that time when i first made my million the only concern i had was I wanted to make sure that, you know, I wasn't going to get divorced, that she wasn't going to get half. You were an idiot to get married. Well, why, Tom? I mean, I have I've, I've great kids. I have a great wife. You could have had great kids and a great wife 10 years from now. You didn't have to do it now. But see, I mean, she, she's a keeper. Well, then if she's such a keeper, stop cheating on her. But, I mean, I can't help it, Tom. Oh, I've had enough. I'm getting a headache. I really am. Jesus Christ. You know, the calls are bad enough. And, and really, we're getting just a, a, with some pips here on the air. But, you know, another thing that happened to me today, first of all, I had to work three extra hours today. I had to go in. I had to work more than anybody on the radio station. I'm not expecting your sympathy in any way, okay? But I'm just telling you what happened today. I did three hours from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. on the air today. Uh, and I had to get out. In order to make it to work in time uh, to be on the air at 10 a.m. on our local station here in L.A., I was supposed to be up about 8 o'clock. So I set the alarm last night and went to bed at about 3.45 a.m. These three Neanderthal morons uh, who can't afford to buy a house on their own, they've split the $7,500 a month rent on a house across the street from me. And they had a full tilt party going on until 4.25 a.m. So I went to bed last night, 10.30, like a good boy, trying to get ready. I knew I had a long day today. And at 3.45, the noise is deafening. I mean, definitely. And these people live, like, across the street from me. So I call, uh, of course, I call the uh, telephone number for the uh, Los Angeles Police Department, the non-emergency number. And I don't even know what the purpose is of calling this number, because you dial this number. And you say, hi, I didn't want to, I didn't want to tie up 911 with this, but there's a very loud party across the street. And you can tell they're, they're just like going to crumple your request up and throw it in the garbage can because it's a non-emergency call. What's the address? Uh huh. Okay. We'll get right on that. So I call at 345. By 415, the cops haven't showed up. I call again. They said, oh, we will let the officers know about that. Well, a, a lot of good this is doing. Finally, like 4.25 a.m., the party starts to break up. So even if the cops showed up, the thing would be over by the time they got there. And these people have parties all night long on work nights all the goddamn time. So I got about four hours sleep last night. Maybe five. That's it. And uh, I'm in hour seven now of working on the air today. It's a lot of goddamn time and not having had any sleep. And now every moron in town is calling in. This is just not my goddamn day. And again, I don't mean to cry to you because this is not your problem. This is why they pay me the big bucks. We, those of you who call in saying you won the lottery or you're lucky or whatever, this is how I earn it. Having days like today, I don't need your sympathy or your pity. just want you to know this is one day when I'm really I'm, I'm earning the goddamn money they're paying me. And just a message to those three guys who live across the street from me and you know who you are. I'll file a lawsuit if I have to. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. This is going to stop. I'm going to find any way necessary. I'm going to spend whatever it takes to make your life a living hell. I'm telling you right now, the three of you know who you are. Tell you what. You just wait. You you have another part until 4.30 a.m. because at 6 a.m. the air horns are going to start going off right into your window. I'm telling you right now. Believable. Jesus! Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. What are you doing out there? Well, we want to flash somebody. All right, here we go. Hold on. You got to roll your windows down. <laughs> this guy's back. He's honking and everything. Look at that. He wants to see them. Here we go. All right. Here we go. There goes the horn. <laughs> that was great. Here we 
Do you like that? I loved it. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Like his show at 1 800 5800 Tom. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. Irene on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Irene. Actually, it's Irene with an L. Oh, I read it off the screen. Uh, uh, the Dago put it up there as Irene, and I read what he wrote. Okay, no problem, Tom. That's all right. Um, I just wanted to call in and say I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think it's disgusting when neighbors disregard uh, the, you know, the rules about sound, and it's just very disrespectful, especially at that time of night. Uh, if they want to make that much noise, why don't they go get a get a house on a piece of property that's a uh, hundred acres? Just plant a house right in the middle. That way, you can make as much noise as you want, and you're not keeping anybody awake. Yeah, well, these guys can't afford a house. So what they did, the rent, by the way, we're talking the Hollywood Hills, which even in the real estate downturn is hot as a pistol right now. And uh, the rent on this house, it's a two-bedroom. It's $7,500 a month. So three losers who could not afford 7500 a month banded together. Uh, for a two-bedroom. For a two-bedroom hey apartment, right. And the center of the living room has a pool table. It's a typical bachelor pad. It's got a pool right. table. Yeah. Uh, very little furniture. And That's they probably the, sit on bean bags. If that, or the floor. And uh, these guys just have parties that uh, begin apparently at like midnight or beyond, and on on weeknights. It's um, unbelievable. And and the police, you know, already have enough to do. Coming over and dealing with my loud party uh, is not their priority, and I understand that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, the thing is, there are other uh, tactics I can take, and among them, uh, the legal tactics, which I'm going to take against the owner of the house and these three morons. Well, I wish you the very best with that, most definitely. Uh, uh, thank you. Definitely need to do something about that. Also, I wanted to add, uh, you know, you are working very hard. You already had to deal with plenty of, um, shall we say, subjects that were probably really annoying to have brought up again and again and again. Um, I was listening to Think Tank all day. Uh, I love your show. And could you take me out with the bong hit? I certainly can. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Alex on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello, Tom. I can barely hear you. So, anyways, Tom, you ever heard the phrase? Rah, rah. You 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 claim you're a multi million dollar man. Yes. With a multi million dollar house. What you got paper thin walls? No, actually, I have double hung windows. I have added insulation. I have very thick walls. It's very difficult for sound to penetrate. That's how loud the sound is. Well, you must live right in the backyard or what? I live right across the street. All right. Well, uh, okay. You got me then. Take me out cry baby style. <laughs> I, it spoke for itself. I don't need to do anything else. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Sarah... On the Tom Like His Show, hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Do you care? Actually, yeah. I'm doing great. I listen to you all the time. You're, sometimes you get on my nerves, but I have to say, overall, I do love you. Thank you. So, so I have this problem. I'm with the 52-year-old man, and I'm 26. I've been with him for eight years. And it's kind of getting more and more difficult as the time goes by. I do not know what to do. What is getting more difficult? Um, everything, you know, the conversations, the sex is not really there. He makes more money of me than me, of course, but we're really, he doesn't give me money. He's a great dad to his son, but he lied to me about having a vasectomy and all kinds. So now you have a kid. Yeah, we have a three-year-old together and I have a nine-year-old daughter. Uh-huh. And, uh... 
you told Dean something about him you didn't tell me. Why don't you tell yeah. it to us? <laughs> well, of course, we. Um, when I first met him, I was not in the best time of my life. I was using. I was not clean. I was what using, were you um, using? Why or what? What? Um, cocaine, rock cocaine. You were smoking crack. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Right. And he was like the big guy where I was around, yes. Yeah, so you got yourself into this situation. Of course, yes. Of and course. then had babies on top of it. Well, see, I've been clean for five years. But why were you having babies? Why am I having babies? Um, well, now, like I said, I've been clean for five years. I'm a dental assistant. I take really But is he, wait a minute, is he clean? He's, no, he doesn't use. He doesn't use. He's a so well, how did you meet him through crack? You told that to Dean, and he told he it to me. Selling. He was selling. He was selling crack. He's a crack dealer. Yes. Yes. Why would you want to have children with a crack dealer? He, he told me he had a vasectomy. He never... What does that have to do with him being a crack dealer? Well, at the time, it was like the perfect thing. The truth, it was like the perfect... What more could I have asked? And why for? weren't you using uh, birth control? Because he said he couldn't have he did, he couldn't have kids. We were together four years. But uh, you might you might meet somebody else and have sex with them. The point is, why were you not using birth control? Being stupid, you know what? Uh, what else can I say? I was being stupid, but I love my baby. I love my, my son. He's wonderful. But He's you have really two good. kids. I mean, what what are you doing? Well, when I had my first, my daughter, I was very young. Um, I grew up in really bad foster care, the system, running away. Excuses, abuse. excuses, excuses, excuses. Exactly. That's why I'm changing my life. I am completely changed my complete life except for the fact that I'm still with the same man. And is he still a crack dealer? No, hell no. I mean, excuse my language. No, no, not what at is all. he? What is he now? He is a hard work. He's always worked. But what now is he? Just, huh? What is he? The cook. He's a cook. Real food cook. <laughs> that does not sound good. A cook. So how did being a crack dealer qualify him to be a cook? for 35 years. He's a lot older than me, like I said. How old is he? 53. He's 53. Yeah. And yet a baby with him. By the way, why didn't you have an abortion? No. <laughs> what do you know? No. I'm not religious or nothing, but I just couldn't live with that. Oh, but I you could, could live not. with smoking crack, uh, getting it on with your dealer, but oh no, having an abortion, that's where you draw the line. No, no, no. Well, what I did is what I did. But like I said, that was five years ago. I've been clean for five years. That's not the it point. Was it was bad judgment, period. And by the way, you were an adult five years ago. Yes, I was. Yes, you were. Absolutely you're not 19, dear. You're 26. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You're absolutely right. But, you know, I would never, I do not regret having my child, neither of my children. I love them. I'm a good mother. I take really good care of them. I work. He doesn't give me any money, pretty much. I pretty much deal, you know, I put my, well, well, I'm American, by the way. You don't, you know, you don't go for American woman, but I cook for my man. I clean my house, take care of my kids. I work. I pick them up, drop them off. You know, I put my part. I really do. He's Hispanic, so you have to when you're with a Hispanic macho man, you know. It's just crazy. My relationship is so crazy. It's not getting any better, that's for sure. Well, why don't you end it? I'm scared of change. You just said that you're changing your life. Changing in good ways, but that's like the unknown, you know. What if, what if I leave him and I can't make it? What if, you know, I, am I scared of my child? The guy's a cook. He's not, he's not Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't find a cook? It's not even about the cook because he doesn't cook me food, let me tell you. <laughs> so, so what are you worried about? I really don't know. You know, I've been with eight years. It's been such. Well, you have not. You still. Your life has not changed substantially. You're still screwed up. Yes, and, and you're absolutely right. You know, I mean, I've changed some things, but in course, if I don't change everything, it's not going to work out. And and I know what I have to do. It's just something just holds me back, and I don't know what it is. And but I have another question for you. I'm 26. Why doesn't he have sex with me? Why do you care? He's an ex-crack dealer who's a cook that you're trying to get away from. <laughs> but we, even so, while we're living together, I mean, I know a man wants what he wants. No, if you want to end it, you, you should stop having sex with him. Well, we don't even have sex. Good. And that's a good thing. Yeah. That way I can't get pregnant again, right? <laughs> Number one. I don't you, need to have another baby. I by don't. the way, why aren't you using birth control now? Don't have sex. But what happened if suddenly he came home and said, tonight's the night I want sex? 
Oh, God, not him. He's not like that anymore, at least. You're just asking me, why doesn't he have sex with me? Yeah, why? Because so I you, wonder, you know... If I'm he not... offered to have sex with you, you would have sex with him. Well, I wouldn't tell him no. But that's you know, my point. Like... Why aren't you using birth control now, you loser? Yes, you're, a loser. you're a loser. You're a loser. You are a loser. Oh, you're so not nice. I'm not trying to be nice. I'm trying to help you, dear. And unfortunately, with many girls like you, you need tough love. Your problem is you are leaving yourself open to make the same mistake for a third time. Yeah, but I don't think I'm a loser. I mean, I made really bad decisions then, in my life. Then go to d tomorrow. Tomorrow, even though it's Saturday, you go tomorrow to Planned Parenthood and you get fitted up for some kind of birth control have my own doctor. I don't need to go to Planned Whatever. Parenthood. Make the appointment now. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you're right, because I shouldn't bring another child into this situation whatsoever. And you're not doing anything to prevent it. Right. Because yeah. one day, he might just come home horny and say, okay, now. And you'll say yes. And then you'll get pregnant again. Yeah. And, of course, I won't have an abortion, but I'll be stuck in a bigger, worse situation than I already am. Two kids with a loser. Well, actually, the other child is not from him. I just said, you, you got pregnant again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. But you should give me some credit because I have... No, I'm not giving you any credit. You need to break no. up this relationship. You need to start using birth control immediately. Then will you give me credit? At that time when you are showing that you really, really don't want to dig a deeper hole for yourself, which you're not showing me now. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, I, I try, I, I do everything but fix my own relationship. You know, I'm doing really good in my career. You, I'm your relationship can't be fixed. He won't have sex with you. Yeah. There's no, you're right. They're, either go together or go to part. And of course, it's not going to get fixed this way. You're so, absolutely right. I know so that. So get out. Right. You're right. You see, I need a father like that in my life. <laughs> yeah, you need someone one. to kick your ass. That's what you need. Yeah. Hold yeah. on a second. Doug, what did you want to say here to Sarah? Hey, Tom, this chick said she's a good mother, but yet she used crack for the first four years of her baby's life. What is she thinking? Wait a minute. No, 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 no. My four-year-old, four I was a teenager with my nine-year-old, excuse me. My three-year-old, I never, uh, -uh. No. How does it make no, you a good mother? You said you've been clean for how long? I've been clean for five years. How old's your daughter? My daughter's nine. I was a teenager. Nine. So for how long were you using crack? I was a teenager back then. That doesn't matter. You were only a teenager for two of those years. The rest of the time, you were uh, uh, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I was 21. I, I had my daughter fine when I was 21. When I was 20, it was about a year and a half. On the air. Uh, no, I'm a, we're taking you out delay style. We're hitting the dump button on that. Jesus Christ. There's something in the air, boys. I, 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 did he? What did he just say? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. I, I thought he said the word again. Chick. Chick? Didn't sound like chick to me. Sounded like something else. Oh, God. I'm in pain. Right now. I'm going after those three guys across the street. I'm telling you. I'm getting them. First, I'm going to use Dean J. D'Amelio as my uh, as my entree over there, and then I'm going for uh, I'm going for uh, the jugular. I'm doing it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It's Flash Friday. It's wide open telephones. More of your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. What is it about this show that people just want to reveal their innermost dirty secrets? I don't know. It's like the, the Tom Likas confession. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Ruben on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you? Great. Awesome. Set you up here with this uh, immigration story, Tom. I know you're having a rough one today. I am. Man. 
So I got this this good story for you. I'm uh, I'm originally from San Diego, and I come out to Los Angeles, you know, every once in a while. And last time I was out here, I caught your story about uh, some dude was calling in saying that these, this girl wanted to pay him a certain amount of money, you know, for marriage so she could get legal in the States. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, you mentioned something about, you know, you're responsible for this girl, you know, even if they're gone, you know, out of your life, you're still responsible for their medical and all that stuff. So I kept that in my head. So uh, these two Russian girls, uh, I met them about, about a month ago, and we'd kick it together, party and stuff. And I haven't heard from them in a while. And all of a sudden, one of them calls me up, and she's like, hey, Ruben, we, you know, want to hang out, want to see what you're up to. So I'm like, sure, come on by. So they both come over. And that's uh, just me and my roommate, and we're drinking, and they start talking about, yeah, we were supposed to be back in Russia uh, about 15 days ago, but we decided to stay, and now we're on the last limb, and we need some help. And I was like, well, what do you need help with? And they're like, we need someone to either marry us or, or show, you know, immigration people proof of at least $20,000 in the bank account. And I started thinking, wow, these, these chicks are something else for asking something like that. And I completely just dissed them. I, I was thinking back to what you said, and uh, if, I don't, if I haven't heard, if I didn't listen to that story on the radio, I think I would have been stupid enough to take three grand from them. But they offered three both, grand. Yeah, they they offered a measly three thousand dollars to both me and my buddy. Cause there's two of them, so it would have been six thousand total. And if I wouldn't have listened to that story, I think my dumbass would have taken the money, and just you know they they weren't looking for. For anything, just they just needed help, and they they were pretty cool chicks. You know, we we kick it all the time, drink and smoke and stuff like that. Did you ever have sex with them? No. See, that was the thing too. I, I was willing to do it if they were willing to put out, but but they were insinuating that they weren't those types of girls. But oh, they're those types of girls. They just don't want to be those types of girls with you. Come on now. They're they're from Russia, man, where that type of stuff is it's acceptable in their in their country. And, well, uh, I don't know about that, you know, but I, <laughs> I will just tell you that Russian girls do put out. It's just they don't want to put out with you. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah, Tom, I just wanted to say thank you, and uh, you rock, man. Thank you, Ruba. Can you uh, take me out Kobe old school style? Kobe and old school. Yep. All right, here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. one 800 tom is our telephone number. Tom on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Great. Uh, got a dilemma for you. About five years ago, uh, I was with the girl. This isn't the first girlfriend I ever had. I was only 23 years old. Well, I was I was 23 years old. I know I'm a late bloomer. But I wanted to have a career. I wanted to have the life. And she told me she couldn't get pregnant. So um, she had a relationship before that with, for two years, and they never got pregnant. So, I mean, I believed her. Um, a few months later, she found out she was pregnant when she was going in the military. She came back to me. I thought that was the last time I was going to see her. Five years later, I did what I thought I was going to do, the right thing. I married her, and now I'm regretting it. Of course you're regretting it. Because it's not the right thing. It's the wrong thing. Exactly. But now I have so much invested. I've got my five-year-old, and I don't know what I can, I don't know if I can handle being away from her all the time. I don't know if she, what she's going to do. Well, you'll be in the neighborhood. You don't have to live at the same address. I just, I'm, I'm afraid that she's going to do something crazy because she's been showing me. It's your mouth. What is it with people today? What is it? Sorry. You can't say words like that on the radio. Sorry. Have you ever heard that word on the radio? No, I'm just frustrated. I know you're frustrated, but you can't say words like that on the radio even when you're frustrated. I'm frustrated today. Have you heard me say that word? No. No. So what? what is your question here? Well, I mean... We're, we've accumulated, we've got about, you know, four or five houses I've accumulated, and I've got about 50000 in debt. And I just don't know, with all the stuff I have and that I don't have, I don't know if I should break it off now or wait. Until the longer you wait, the more, secure. the longer you wait, the more it costs. So you think I should, 
wait not sell my houses now or should I wait till I sell my house? The longer wait? you wait, the more it costs. The longer you are married, the more you're going to have to pay. Yeah. And I just, is there anything I can do to protect myself from her trying get, to run away? Or? Get an attorney. Attorney? Today or tomorrow, Monday. You don't even have an attorney, I'll bet. Yeah. Time to get one. Yeah. Are you going to? Yeah. I need to do something. I'm just. You need to do it now. Yeah. I do. I've been. I, I mean, I knew after the first year or two that it wasn't going to work, and I just was trying to make it work for the family. Well, don't cheap out on this, Tom. Yeah. You will not lose any money. Any money. Oh. Hiring a great attorney. Okay. I guess that's what I got to do. Yes, you do. Now. Now. Not wait. Correct. Let the attorney determine your timing. I guess that's what I just needed to hear. I just... Like I said, I'm just hoping for something to happen and nothing's happening. Well, then your attorney will tell you when it's time to act. All right. You'll do what the attorney says. All right, Tom. Well, I like your show. I wish I would have listened to it a long time ago, and I probably wouldn't have been in this mess. I agree with you, Tom. But uh, now you know what you have to do, so do it. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks. Sure. Julio on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yeah. What's up? Uh, the ratings and, uh, as usual, my paycheck again. Yeah. I heard you're crying about these three little kids that are uh, that were partying last night. What's Until, that about? No, they were partying this morning. Oh, this morning. What's yeah. that about? You got to take them to court? Because the police uh, are in incapable of uh, making this a priority, and I understand that they are, so I'm going to have to take legal action. So why don't you go over yourself and knock on the door and tell them to shut because up? Because I'm in bed and I don't want to have to get up and get dressed and go out. It defeats the purpose. I'm trying to go back to sleep. Okay, there are kids. kids, are, kids and by the way, kids. in the past, when people have gone over there to knock, they essentially flip everybody off. No, no, no. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. Reasonable. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, right, no. no. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. This is indisputable. <laughs> You were, unless you live on that street, you do not know. They have flipped people off. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's Ryan. Uh, it's, it's, is it Ryan? Or, me, wait, is it Ryan or Brian? Ryan, sorry. Ryan, okay. Let me just say, first, this is ridiculous. These callers today, each one dumber than the last. You've earned every penny. Thank you. And uh, I just wanted to call because a few uh, economists at the Wharton School in Pennsylvania recently published a paper studying some uh, divorce statistics. And what's been reported in newspapers, and I assume where you probably got your number that 50, 55, 60 percent of divorces end in marriage, is actually misquoting a study that was done that looked at, divorce, looked at uh, marriages that occurred between, I believe, like 1970 and 1990. And it said, how many of those marriages have lasted 25 years? Well, obviously, a marriage in 1990 studied in 2006 or 2007. There's a new study. There, forget it. Years. Whatever that said, there's a new study, and we read it on the air, uh, that pinpointed the figure at 45%, and which is not the old study. From? Uh, I'm just quoting what I read from two published economists, and I trust anything that's published in a peer review article way more than anything I read in a newspaper. First thing your listener should learn, and you should learn as well, is that anything published in the newspaper is wrong. They have no idea what statistics mean, and it's a joke what gets, what gets published. Well, I don't know how many studies you're reading, but I think the New York Times is a pretty good source for information. Anyway, thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.